Let's talk a little bit about this uh, intro here, make sure it makes sense. So I said, um, uh, using only a single piece of hardware, how might a designer rigidly connect a cylindrical post to a part such that the post could be used to yada, yada, yada. So we're going to sketch something out here. Uh, and all I was trying to convey with that is, let's say that you have, um, I don't know, a wall, a block, whatever that is over here, and you want to attach a post to it, like that. A post, like cylindrical? Yeah, so like something like, like that, a post. Got it. And then you want to be able to use that post for whatever. Maybe you want to wrap uh, a rope around it, something like that, or... Maybe you have an extension spring, so you your eye of the extension spring, and then you got your you know that, and then you did the eye. <clears throat> but that's all it was is a, a post, um, something like that sticking off. So how might a designer rigidly connect a cylindrical post to a part such that the post could be used to attach a variety of applications? Okay, so if we go back to the drawing, boom. boom. Uh, really, the question is, what can we put right there, right? So it attaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the answer is the shoulder bolts. Shoulder bolts, right. So we've got this beautiful, pristine, clean post right here, right? This cylindrical interface with no threads on it, just nice and clean. And screw threads at the end, so you can screw it in. And the cylindrical post, excuse me. So this is cylindrical post. Oh, we come attached right here, and here's the wall. Yeah. So uh, this is the post itself right here, and the wall would be, you know, like right there, often over here. Awesome. But really, this is how long in reality? Like this long in real life? This piece of hardware, maybe this long? Yeah, something like that. So if you want to put rope around it, maybe you can only put rope like three times or something, depending on the thickness of the rope. Sure. I, in my mind, I was thinking that. This post was something large. Got it. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I'll have to update that. Maybe this, like, this is like a nail a on the wall. Short post. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like that. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Visuals. Is everything there? Okay. Okay. So, how else could the same or very similar shoulder bolt geometry be produced without using an actual shoulder bolt? How else could you? How else could the same or very similar shoulder bolt geometry be produced without using an actual shoulder bolt? So let's look at shoulder bolt, and I'm thinking this looks like a dowel pin. Is that right? Dowel pin. Dowel pin. Thank you. Mm, hexagonal. What do you call that? Like hexagonal nut. Almost. Head. Hexagonal head nut. Um, looks like a bolt almost, right? Very similar, yeah. But this is the part that differentiates it from the bolt. Because a bolt would be thread all of it. Right? right, right. So what's the purpose of no thread here? That's my question. It's just a clean interface that you can hold on to. So something can maybe rotate mm -hmm. on there? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking just a bolt and then slide something on there to make this um, non-threaded part. Yeah. But there's nothing like the actual hardware itself because it's been proven. So we don't recommend making those things at home, right? Yeah, there's really no reason to, to make that. But uh, you're exactly right. Uh, if, if you wanted, this is just kind of like a thought challenge here. But there are things called um, spacers and they're basically just cylinders like that and if you if you had one of these spacers and then you also took a bolt just a normal uh, socket head cap screw you know and this is threaded all the way through you could just uh, slide that spacer on, onto your screw and then you'd have more or less the same geometry of course that spacer would rotate but that probably doesn't matter 
Okay. Uh, what else we got here? Beyond acting as a post around which another part rotates, how else might a shoulder bolt be utilized? <clears throat> um, just like as a nail, like to hang some paintings on a wall, I guess. It does have a head. You can screw it on a wall. So I guess if you run out of nails, you can use one of these. Okay. So that, that's an interesting thought. Why would someone use a shoulder bolt over a nail or vice versa? Um, I mean, I would, I would use a nail for a regular wall, but if you run out of nails, I would use the shoulder bolt. But to answer your question, why would someone use a shoulder bolt over a nail? Um, I think you will have to do something with this. The whole idea of the shoulder bolt is this area. This is what differentiates it, the non-threaded part. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is I'm hanging, it would have to have, it would have to be a good match for this. Whether it's in terms of maybe the thread damaging the string, maybe mm -hmm. we're holding it. Um, yeah, because perhaps ima imagine you're hanging something on a, on a wall uh, and you need a, a nail, but you have a nail. So let's compare it to a bolt. So you have a bolt and you put the thread on the bolt. If there's going to be friction, imagine it's like a painting that you're hanging in a submarine or in a boat and the boat moves. So there's going to be a lot of friction. And then if you use one of these, perhaps it could make the, the string last longer. Yeah, for sure. Less abrasion there. Yeah. Um, I, I think, and I'm not, I'm not sure that there is a single right answer here, but as far as why use a shoulder bolt over a nail, I think strength is a big reason. Uh, shoulder bolts are intended to be threaded into machine threads and if you're dealing with machine threads you're usually dealing with metal parts sometimes plastic but um, if you were to thread this into a piece of metal that's going to be a really secure robust attachment whereas if you're using a nail you know you're probably going into wood or I don't know sheetrock or something where the, the supporting material is not nearly as strong and thus the, the, the connection with your nail and whatever you're hanging is not going to be as strong as a shoulder bolt in, in metal. Now my question is, isn't every part has a point where it's most fragile? What do you call that point? Um, I'm Cause, not sure that there's I a think, name for that. I think this point right here, mm -hmm. just looking at this, someone that, I'm not an engineer, Looking at this, I think this is like the weak point. Sure. This yeah. is where it could potentially crack. Sure. Right there. Do yep. you agree on that? Definitely. My other thing was, I'm only looking at this, it has like one, two, three, like seven threads. And I'm thinking, man, if I want something to really stick or hang on to whatever surfer it is, it is I'm screwing it on, I would want all threaded. Could you talk to us about the difference between all threaded versus seven threads? Sure, yeah. Um, so typically you only need about a diameter and a half of thread engagement to get um, the vast majority of your holding strength. So when I say a, a diameter and a half, I'm referring to this diameter right here of the thread. So let's say that's a quarter inch diameter. And so to, to get you know the majority of your holding strength, uh, you need... Uh, 1.5 times that quarter inch diameter, which would be 0.375. So all you really need is about three eighths of an inch of engagement length to, to really give you your, your full potential of hold, holding, uh, holding strength. And then as far as the interface over here, you're, you're correct that uh, that is going to be the weak point. But these, uh, um, these shoulder bolts are typically made out of stainless steel or some alloy steel. Uh, which are really strong materials. So e even a small size shoulder bolt is going to be able to hold up to quite a bit of force. Um, of course, you know, as the designer, you need to understand what that force is and make sure that you're not under designing based on the, the loads in your application. But still, uh, you're going to be able to place a, a, a pretty large force on this without having to worry about it failing. That's great. Thank you. If you've found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. 
We hope to see you there soon.